YouTube, the world's largest online video sharing community, has become a cultural phenomenon in many countries around the world and has reinvented online new media platforms. The first YouTube roadshow in the MENA region was held in Riyadh, aimed to educate content generators to YouTube's viable business models, vital policy, copyright basics, and content strategy. This includes communicating product updates and policy changes to YouTube partners. I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. Yeah, I'm originally, so I'm originally a musician and a sound engineer. And I got this idea actually from YouTube, from uh, people who were already doing this kind of uh, form of uh, music, which is a cappella, where I record all the uh, different sounds from my voice only. They were covering some English songs. So I thought it would be a good idea if I do something in uh, our language, something more relevant to our culture. So I made the, a couple of a cappellas first in Arabic. I like one of the recent ones I made, Aisha, because it's a song I like for, by Shab Khalid. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I think the partners here that are content creators in Saudi really are doing really well in terms of copyright. In fact, we're here to protect their copyright on, on their, their content. So we have something called Content ID, which protects them. So they're obeying, and actually we're working hard to make sure that the original content they're doing stays safe and protected for them. So uh, we did a uh, recent sort of global study which included Saudi Arabia uh, to determine what, uh, what people wanted to see on YouTube and what their favorite content was. And for Saudi Arabia, uh, the most popular content was entertainment, uh, particularly around comedy, um, sporting events, and also live events. And uh, we also see uh, emerging content coming around things like do-it-yourself videos, uh, content for women, also particularly education. Challenges. I, I'm really optimistic. You know, I left uh, I left the states to come spe specifically back to Riyadh. You know, and I, I feel like there's a, a real like renaissance happening, and there's real like creative energy coming out of the, these lands. So I don't see that there are going to be any real barriers yeah, per se. But I I think I'm, I'm actually really optimistic. The the challenges are uh, the everyday egos that you might come across or the difficulties on a personal level, but everything's good. I think people here uh, want to watch something that talks in their own language, want to, to watch something that is, you know, completely down to earth. It, it talks the language that people use in the streets. And I think that was something that is, uh, that, that's, that is exactly something missing from TV. You know, and, and I think that was one of the main reasons why YouTube became so popular here in Saudi Arabia, is that we've always been bombarded with these TV shows and none of them really talk our language, none of them is using our metaphors and our jokes, and, and so you cannot relate to those people on TV. While on the other hand, on YouTube, people love what they're watching on YouTube because it's exactly who they are. Every two hours, a YouTube video is uploaded per minute in the MENA region. With 310 million views a day, it's no wonder that YouTube has become a lucrative platform for creative entertainers in the region. With their personal drive, innovation and inspiration, originality is a constant challenge. But are the current copyright laws an issue in content generation?